It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel and fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Come on, guys, we've got to get, get rid of fear this year. Every kind of fear. Every kind of fear we've got to get rid of this year. Listen to the way it says it in the Passion Translation. It says, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away all my fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. Lift your hands up, Father. I decree right now, Father God, that you are delivering us from every kind of fear, every kind of assignment from hell. God, we have nothing to fear because you're our shepherd. We will not want God. You restore our soul. You lead us in paths of righteousness. And so God, no matter where where you lead us, God, no matter the place of trial, God, we know you are going to turn it around for our good. We know, God, that you cause everything to work for our good. And so, God, we decree fear will have no part of us this year in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. Some of you that have been dealing with a lot of fear, you need to come down afterwards and let some of our teams really pray for you. Because let me tell you, I, I tried to muscle my way through fear for enough years and it wasn't until finally Apostle Tom laid hands on me. Finally. He finally laid hands on me. No, the, the reason he finally is because I didn't ask for help. Two minutes and I'll tell you that story. I'm already over time, but two minutes and I'll tell you the story. So I dealt with fear, horrible, horrible fear. Fear of the dark, fear of snakes, fear of all kinds of stuff, stuff that was reasonable, stuff that was not reasonable, just paralyzing my life. I could get up and prophesy from a platform in front of a thousand people, but I couldn't turn lights off in my house. Seriously. I know, it's, it's ridiculous. But it was my, how many understand fear is ridiculous, but it's real when it's you? And so I had battled this thing with fear, and specifically fear of the dark, and I would shut the lights off after I get up and take care of my babies at night. And uh, I would shut my lights off at night and I would stand literally paralyzed, paralyzed in, my be in my bedroom. And all I had to do was take three steps and get in the bed and I would, be, I would be fine. But I was paralyzed by fear. And I would shut those lights off and I would stand there and I would, I would quote the scripture, God has not given me a spirit of fear but of love and of power to sound mine. God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love and of power to sound mine. God has not given me the spirit. And then I would get defeated and I would turn the light back on and get in bed. And I felt just like such a failure. And you know, it's so shameful. What a wimp. You know, I mean, that's how, that's how I felt. Like, what a wimp. And so one night, I decided I was going to wake my husband up and confess that I've been struggling with all this fear. And I didn't do it before because, again, it just seemed so stupid. It just seemed shameful. And so on that particular night, I woke my husband up. Now, let me just say, my husband can pray like nobody I know. However, at 3 o'clock in the morning, it just let me clue you in. It's not his best time, okay? So I say to him, I'm, I, I'm crying. I'm in full-blown cry, and, and I wake him up. And he goes, what, what, what's going on? I said, babe, I've just been, I just need you to pray for me. And he's like, oh, okay, 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 what, what's going on? I said, I just had this horrible struggle with fear, and, and I, I'm afraid of the dark, and I know it's stupid, but I just, I just have so much fear. And he goes, okay, 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 let me, let me pray for you. And he reaches over, and he puts his hand on my head, and the prayer went something like this. <sighs> Dear Jesus, I just pray for Jane. And I command the spirit of fear. I command you to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, go. <laughs> Seriously, okay. He said he was resting in faith, okay? But that that's pretty much the way the prayer went, okay? And I want you to know, when he prayed that, excuse me, honey, pitiful prayer, this spirit that had been like a shroud around my life 
broke off and lifted off and I literally felt it leave. And I got so mad. I was like, are you kidding me, God? I have been fasting. I've been praying. I've been quoting the scripture. I've been battling this out. And he prays a pitiful little prayer and I get set free? What's up with that? And the Lord said to me, yeah, beyond the issue with fear, I really wanted to deal with your issue of pride and independence. You sit down. <laughs> you sit down. <laughs> but see, I stayed in bondage. Hear me, guys. I stayed in bondage because I didn't want to expose an area of weakness. Hear what I'm saying. Get rid of your junk. And if you need somebody else to help you get rid of it, then come and let somebody help you get rid of it. There is no shame in that. Amen? I promise you, these deliverance ministers, they've heard it all. You're not going to surprise them. So get free. Look at your neighbor and say, get free. That was, none of that was in my notes, but y'all must have needed that, okay? God wants to cause us to walk on places of righteousness. It's number, number the, the next scripture says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. This is about this year, guys. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. It changes from a pastoral scene to a great banqueting table. That's what we're doing when we take communion. We're entering into the banqueting table of the Lord. We're entering in and letting God prepare a feast in front of our enemies. Now, I did a little word study on this verse. And look at what enemies means. It means distress, oppression, affliction, to cramp, to besiege, to trouble, to be vexed. How many know that's what the enemy wants to do? And instead, God prepares a table before our enemies, and then he starts anointing our head with oil, which is what the master of the house does to his distinguished guests. So in the presence of all of our enemies, he anoints us. That word anoint means to be fat. I'm feeling pretty good about myself now. To be fat, to be satisfied, to take away the ashes of grief, and to be prosperous he anoints our head with oil that is grease from the olive it means richness fatness fruitfulness and oil is needed for fire my cup runs over my container the container of my life my bag my purse my wallet my bank account the container of my life runs over the word runs over means satisfaction, to become wealthy, to abundantly fill and to slake one's thirst. Come on, guys. This is what God has for us. He wants to anoint our heads with oil. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. It is the anointing that turns everything around. I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to make this decree with me. Why do I have you decree? Because you've got to open your mouth and say what God's saying. Some of you are taking pictures of it. I hope you say it every day. So here's what we're going to say. In the presence of every mocking, threatening, distressing enemy that tries to trouble or besiege me, instead, you make my head prosperous by releasing your yoke-breaking anointing, putting richness and fruitfulness upon me. You take away the ashes of the last season. Now the container of my life and soul is abundantly satisfied. My spiritual thirst is slaked. And my purse is made wealthy. I am anointed with fresh oil so the fire of the Holy Spirit can burn passionately in my life every day of 2023. Now, as you continue to stand, we're going to finish this. Because it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here's what goodness means. Lift your hands. This is what's going to follow us. This is what's going to chase us down. This is what's going to track us down this year. You ready for it? That which is beautiful, happy, cheerful, 
prosperous, say it with me, filled with favor, kindness, joyful, precious, sweet, and wealthy. All these things are going to follow me in 2023. Not only that, but mercy shall follow me. Loving kindness, favor, good deeds, mercy and grace from God, pardoning mercy, protecting mercy, sustaining mercy, and supplying mercy. Lift your hands. Father, I decree that this is what you've got for us, Father God. Lord, we're moving out of past seasons, past trials, past trials, past turmoils, past trouble, past the things that the enemy wants to distress us with, and he's bringing us in to a season where where our cup overflows, where our heads are anointed with oil, and where goodness and mercy follow us all the way through 2023 and for the rest of our life. And if you believe that, I want you to give a big shout of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. 